My name is Blake Johnson. I'm the design director here at Hatch Duo. And today I thought I'd talk a little bit about the palettes feature in BizCon. Palettes was introduced end of 2024 alongside a lot of other training tools in AI tools like Midjourney and things. So it basically allows you to train the AI to match a certain style. Typically, this is to match your own creative style. So you would upload uh, sketches or images that you've created so that the AI can then mimic your style. Uh, but there are actually other uses for it as well. And that's kind of what I wanted to look into today. This will not be a tutorial video. BizCom's official YouTube channel has amazing tutorial content. So I would recommend you go there. Today, I'm just going to be talking about different ways that you might be able to use the palettes with reference images rather than trying to match uh, a personal style. You can maybe match a design to an aesthetic that you're referencing from existing images. So let's jump into it. All right. So here we are in BizCom's Workbench interface. And what I've done here is kind of done the work ahead of time <laughs> to lay out several experiments with palettes. So I trained four different palettes and I've run these through the system with a basic sketch of a headphone, you know, just a, an over your headphones design. So just to start things off and, and set up the experiment, what I've done for all four of these is created a palette. I've then uh, added a sketch, I've added a prompt box, and then I ran uh, with my palette influence added. I've run each experiment at 100 percent drawing influence, 80 percent, 60 and 40 percent drawing influence. Uh, and then I have two rows because I've tried a couple of different things here that I'll explain here in a minute. So the way we found the palettes works is for starters, you enter your sketch, you add the prompt box. If you use the describe tool, it will detect what is shown in your image uh, and create a basic description. In this case, this is the description I got over your headphones with cushioned ear pads and adjustable headband featuring a wired connection. Very plain, very generic, right? Very straightforward. When you get into the tool and you choose which palette you would like to influence this design, as soon as you select the palette, it actually changes that description. It updates that description and adds on to the end of it. So for example, here, this is the, the initial description I got. It'll change every single time if you hit describe again, or if you reassign the palette, it will update and change the description. But the very first time I did it, this is what got added. Fleek tech devices, minimalist design, black and gray, headphone design, studio background, vibrant lighting. That's describing these images in my palette one. Now, the way I selected these images for palette one is just a control, basically, for the experiment. I, I wanted to try basically what you might try your first time using any tool is not very organized, just grabbing whatever images of, you know, cool images with headphones. There's no consistency between the type of view, the lighting, the design style. You know, I even have one image in here that's not necessarily headphones, but kind of looks vaguely like headphones. So I wanted to see how the system might deal with images that are somewhat related, but not visually similar. Then what came out, again, with drawing influence descending in 20% intervals, well, here, let me, let me look at the sketch first. <laughs> so the sketch was very, very straightforward. Nothing, nothing too innovative here. Just a basic, you know, headphone sketch form. And what came out of this palette influence is, you know, a, a decent headphone design, but we're definitely getting some pop lighting. We have things glowing in areas that, that may not typically glow. <laughs> it's kind of just assigning lighting in ways that uh, that are maybe not that realistic because that's what was in our palette and you can see that there's not a lot of stylistic consistency necessarily uh, you know even when we get down to 40 percent, it loses all lighting entirely now just as part of the experiment what i really wanted to try was eliminating the text additions that come from the palette so basically if i run it with the palette attached but i remove the additional text what comes out, right? So this is like basically reverting the, the prompt back to its most generic headphone description. When I do that, in theory, it's getting the influence entirely from the images, not from the text. And so that's what the second row is, is entirely just image influence with no text guiding it. And just for comparison, you can kind of see how that text changes things or how that text influences. So now, you know, the backgrounds, we're, we're losing that studio background, that kind of interesting 
settings. We're, we're getting a lot more, actually uh, getting a lot more lighting and, and various colors, kind of random application of colors. It's not really making a lot of sense. And then, you know, kind of Tron style glowing edges and, and lighting in there. And this is very clearly coming from one specific image within the palette. And that's this, this kind of crazy concept design up here with, with the neon glowing features. So it's kind of amazing even just how much one image can influence the outcomes here. So that's, that's the first experiment. Just again, as a control, not very organized or concise or detailed in how I selected the images for those palettes. Now, moving on to experiment two. So here I wanted to kind of simulate what a normal ID workflow might be. You might create a mood board with design elements or design forms or inspiration that you would want to influence that design. So I wanted to see, you know, do we need to change our workflow to use palettes or can palettes fit seamlessly into a typical workflow with inspiration images? So a lot of these are, are fairly consistent. You know, we're going for a minimalist aesthetic, you know, very kind of high-tech detailing, soft forms overall. So looking for ergonomic shapes and, and soft forms. And the experiment was run exactly the same. I had tried, you know, both the text description that was generated from the from the palette, which, you know, you can pause the video and, and have a quick read through. But that's the top row. And then the second row, again, I removed any of those custom text descriptions just went with a very generic description to see how it changed. We'll scroll through here very quickly. With the text fronts in there, we got a lot more black and white, a lot more kind of straightforward application of, of CMF and detailing and color. Even some of the details around you know, the head padding and the ear cups came out a little bit nicer. Definitely a lot cleaner, especially if you compare to the first design. You know, there's a lot more features, lines, and, and lights. So I do think that it somewhat works. It kind of works to take some of that minimalist and, and soft ergonomic aesthetic. And then without the text description, we actually do lose a fair amount of that. If you try to get image influence only with no text, random colors get added. You know, we don't necessarily want the headphones to be red. I don't even know where that came from because there was no red in the palette whatsoever. So we get some mysterious, you know, AI artifacts in there. And then just the overall aesthetic, you know, you see sharper edges come in uh, a little bit more, you know, hard detailing, uh, less soft. So even though the majority of the images had that soft, pillowy aesthetic, it actually gets lost when we don't allow the text description to kind of help the palette along. Okay, so experiment three. This is what I gathered from BizTom's official publications and videos with Scott Robertson. This is kind of what I imagined to be the, the bread and butter of the palettes feature. And that is to generate images in a certain style and match a style. So here I was super hyper-focused on only showing headphones and only showing them in the studio environment that I wanted to see the images in. So specifically, very dynamic and colorful lighting you know, studio environments and all headphones relatively close to, you know, similar angles and views. Kind of close to the, the sketch angle that I actually put in as well. So I'm trying to see how closely VizCon can match this exact style. Again, just like the other two experiments, the top row is with the text description that got auto-generated from the palette, and the bottom is without that special text description. And you can see that the first with the, the top row with the text description actually works very well. The designs are, are interesting. They actually look a little bit more realistic than some of the past concepts. I think because we're pulling more from actual headphones, so the AI is able to read that and, and understand headphones a little bit better. So detailing in the ear pads and, and ear cups looks a little bit better. We're definitely getting that studio lighting, that vibrant multicolor lighting coming through in all of these. And, you know, even at 40% drawing influence, we actually get a very nice visual of, of headphones. It does look a lot different from the sketch at this stage, but at least it's, it's you know, looking like headphones. <laughs> Without the text description, again, the colors get applied in random ways. We get glowing orange lines. The studio lighting doesn't get applied logically. This doesn't look like a red light source. This looks like somebody spray painted red on the headphones. And, uh, you know, other areas, just random applications of color. And even the headphones start to fall apart. You know, it doesn't really real headphones anymore. 
All right, moving on to the final experiment. This I did not expect to work at all. <laughs> I had tried an entirely emotion or metaphor driven palette. So this is entirely just the, the feelings and the moods and the vibes that we want to get from these images, not necessarily design aesthetic or, or a certain image style, just emotion. <laughs> so I didn't think this would work at all, but I wanted to see how far off it might be. Uh, so again, we had an auto generated description for the top row for the bottom row, since this was kind of an, an outside the kind of fringe case. Uh, I custom wrote the description to try to bring in those emotions rather than having it describe the visuals. So I tried to see if I could describe the emotions and, and have that come out a little bit better. I would say this experiment failed about as much as I expected it to. We got weird applications of, of leather uh, and different colors of leather that I can only imagine comes from the skin tone of the images that have people in them and their clothing colors and, and textures as well. So. You know, we got a lot of strange artifacts. Even when I tried to describe the emotions, we still get random applications with CNBF and things that are just nonsensical. We get a lot more AI artifacts in there as well and strange forms that don't make sense for headphones. So Palace is definitely not for emotional mood boards or inspiration images in that vein. <laughs> just as a, a side note as well, when working in the workbench, you really only have control over the drawing influence, but not palette influence. If you do go into the edit interface within VizCom, you can set a palette influence so that that palette uh, has less uh, weight on the sketch. So you can kind of balance and, and play with the scales between palette influence versus drawing influence. I did a quick test here, and essentially these are the two 80% drawing influence from the, the top and bottom rows of this experiment. So in theory, with 60% palette influence, 80% drawing influence, the outcome should be somewhere between these two images. Again, in theory, AI is not that predictable, but you can kind of, just as I quickly scroll through, you can kind of see how those influences kind of come together. Uh, we do still get some, some good lighting, some strange applications with CMF, and with the feeling or, or emotional mood board, it, it, it just doesn't work. <laughs> it's a failure. So in conclusion, by coming down, I lined up each of the four experiments side by side so we could see them all together. In conclusion, palettes, definitely a very powerful tool. It does not have to be used exclusively for customizing to your own personal style. You can use inspiration or influence images as long as there's kind of a coherent theme or, you know, one consistent aesthetic or vibe. It is most powerful when you can give it images of the actual objects or, or similar objects along with studio or environment or lighting settings that you're seeking in your output image. I would say that third experiment was the most successful as far as designing headphones. I would also say that the auto-generated text that the palette influence creates is also very important. It's best to not leave it with just a generic description. Let that text that's generated from the palette come in there or even customize it to point to specifically what in the palette you want pulled through into your design. So if you up you create a palette that's entirely based on studio lighting, you know, update that description or, or that prompt text to reflect that or to specifically point to studio, studio lighting. And then I think you will get a lot more out of your palettes that way. So that's what I have for you today. If you have any thoughts or feedback on any of these experiments with palettes, or if you've been doing your own experiments and found anything interesting or, or you know, especially powerful, please comment on this video. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you disagree or if you found differences from, from how we're working with them. Also, please like and subscribe for more videos on AI workflows and design, design theory, all of the like. Check out our other videos on YouTube as well. We have a pretty good foundation of, of videos from Hatch Duo at this point, talking about different projects we've worked on, clients that we've collaborated with, all kinds of things. Really good stuff. So have a look at our channel. Thank you for staying to the end of this video, and hopefully we'll see you out there designing excellent products. Yeah.